Sports. We are We are Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. came through for the Tigers when they needed him the most in a driving rain Bosch slammed a one out solo shot in the bottom of the eighth inning it turned out to be the game winning homer the game winning hit and the Tigers took game one in this series against Texas it is another cloudy overcast but warm evening here at the ballpark tonight as we welcome you to downtown Detroit and this evening we have game two in this three game series featuring the Texas Rangers and the Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, glad to have you with us for game two of this series. Rod Allen joins us in a moment. You know, when the month of August rolls around, typically that's when the pennant race really starts to heat up. For the Tigers, they made a move to bolster their pitching rotation and their bullpen. David Pauley comes over from Seattle. He made his Tigers debut last night. And tonight, it'll be Doug Fister making his first Tigers start of the season. Now, don't pay attention to Fister's 3-12 and record with Seattle. These are the numbers that seem to be more important. A lack of run support. Only 1.97 runs per ball game, and it starts with Seattle lowest in the major leagues. And he had six starts this year with zero runs of support. Hopefully, coming over to this Tigers team, this offense certainly will show Doug Fister a little bit more support. That's the story from here at Comerica Park. Game two in this series coming up, but right now we check back into the Call Sam Studios. Here's Mickey York.
Nice night for baseball here in the Motor City as we welcome you back to Comerica Park in downtown Detroit. Game two in this series featuring the visiting Texas Rangers and the Detroit Tigers. A couple of first place clubs again going at it here tonight. The Tigers win the opener last night and they're hopeful of doing the same again here this evening. Doug Fister will be making the start for the Detroit Tigers. Our scouting report is presented by Scott's Lawn Pro and here's Fister demonstrating his pitch grips. I'm pretty simple. You know, I've got my basic four seam uh, fastball. I, I turn it a little bit for my, my two seam, you know, not holding on to any seams for, for that uh, sinking fastball. My curveball is, is pretty standard, you know, but uh, really just trying to get on top of that one. My changeup is, is kind of a, a, a split versus a, a circle change, but uh, these two fingers really aren't doing much and really just trying to throw it as hard as my fastball, you know, and then the cutter. Now I just take my four seam fastball and just, just turn it just a smidge. We have seen uh, Duck Fister a couple of times when he has gone up against the Tigers hitters. And the one thing that he adds is deception because he stands six feet, eight inches, and the ball seems to get on the hitters in a hurry. And that's an added advantage for Duck Fister. Well, let's check out the starting lineup that he will face tonight. It is presented by your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers for the Texas Rangers. Ian Kinsler leads it off. He'll play second base. Elvis Andrews at short. Josh Hamilton is in center. Michael Young at third. Nelson Cruz had a big game last night. He's in right. Mitch Moreland is at first. And their bottom three tonight is Mike Napoli, David Murphy, and your V to Tori Alba. Well, if Detroit combines for three or more home runs in this game, make sure you bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow, and you'll get yourself a free small order of curly fries. We check out the numbers on Doug Fisker and the one thing I guess we look at first is the win loss record. But that doesn't mean a whole lot concerning uh, his secondary numbers which are a lot better. Well Doug Fisker received the lowest amount of run support in the American League. He made 21 starts this year for the Seattle Mariners and re received under two runs per game. Awfully tough to win big league games when you're not getting any support at all. Let's take a look at the Tigers defensive alignment here tonight by Jim Leland. It is always presented by Beaumont Health System. You've got Bosch in left, Jackson in center, Ordonez is in right, Betamy, Peralta, Guillen, Cabrera in the infield, and you also have Avila behind the plate, but Ryan Rayburn is the starting second baseman tonight. Carlos Guillen is not in the lineup. So we are ready for baseball here as Ian Kinsler strolls into the batter's box. Doug Fister all set to go. It'll be Kinsler, Andrews, and Hamilton for the Rangers in the first inning. And the first pitch of the ball game is down the middle of strike. A pleasant 81 degrees tonight. Kinsler 0 for 4 in last night's game. And he looks at one down low. One ball, one strike. I was asking Avila today how he would approach catching Fister for the very first time when you really don't know what he likes to do. He said it'll be totally up to Fister here tonight, at least the first few innings. I'll kind of see what he wants to call in certain situations, and I'll kind of follow his lead, whereas usually it's the pitcher following the catcher's lead. 2-1 is chop foul, third base side. Also told you that Fister has a little bit of a history going up against the Texas Rangers team when pitching for Seattle, so he pretty much has an idea of what he wants to do against these hitters. One and three lifetime against Seattle with a 4 7 8 ERA. Or I should say Texas, that is. There's Johnny coming over to make the play, and Kinsler is out, one gone. Ground ball out for Doug Fister, one up, one away. I don't know what it is with the last couple of weeks and Johnny Peralta playing that shortstop position, but he's playing it better than we've ever seen him play it, and he's showing a tremendous amount of range. Johnny made a couple of sparkling plays in last night's ball game. Yeah, he did. And already makes a solid one here tonight. Elvis Andrews steps in. Andrews one out of five in last night's ball game. And right now enjoying a six game hitting streak. That's rolled foul 0 and 1. Fister stands six feet eight inches tall 195 pounds out of Merced California. He's only 27 years of age. And when you look at the trade the Tigers made, much of the reason behind getting Fister, aside from his talent, is that he'll be around here a while. He's a guy that can really stabilize that number five spot in the Tigers' rotation. Of course, those first three have 
really been taking up the last few years and Penny has done a marvelous job in that number four spot this year. Right back to the mound and knocked down by Fisker. That's out number two. Andrews is out of there. Good start tonight for Doug. Fister, for the most part, doesn't fit the profile of the starting pitchers that we have seen David Dombrowski run to the major leagues the last few years or even make deals for. But this time of year, buddy, when you're trying to get a starter to, to bolster your staff, it's hard to go out and find a really hard thrower, the kind that David Dombrowski really likes. And as they say, everybody wants starting pitching at the trade deadline. Tigers certainly no different. As Hamilton steps in. And strike one from Fister. But Fister's got a two seamer anywhere from 89 to 92 miles an hour. He has a cutter and he throws his cutter at different speeds and he also has a curveball. No slider. No balls, two strikes on Josh Hamilton. Tigers pretty much wrapped him up last night. He had an infield hit in five at bats. Seven game streak now for Hamilton. The 0 2. Driven toward left center field. That looks like trouble, and that ball is going to be caught instead by Bosch, who runs it down in the gap. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for Doug Fister, so his first start in a Tigers uniform is off to a good start. Tigers lineup tonight and their starting batting order is presented by Big Boy Jackson Bosch Ordonez at the top Cabrera's in the middle along with Martinez and Peralta and your bottom three tonight Rayburn is spelling Guillen at second base Avila and Benamit will round out the lineup the Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Matt Harrison get the Bernstein advantage we go to bat for you Harrison really having a good year for Texas he's got power stuff his fastball anywhere from 89 to 94 miles an hour his second best pitch probably the changeup and that's the one that he dominates a right handed hitters with we'll get into that a little bit more and he's a strike thrower uh, he's around the plate he does not walk many during any of his starts. Austin Jackson hitless in four at bats in last night's ball game, batting 246. Harrison's 0 1. One ball, one strike on Jackson. That's a good win for the Tigers last night. The leadoff man didn't do a whole lot. The setup man blew a lead. They made some errors. Runners in scoring position weren't very good, but they won the game. Tigers, I think, showed some grit not only last night, but on Sunday as well, beating a couple of really good teams. That are also battling for a playoff spot. The Angels on Sunday in Texas last night. Yeah, that at bat by Brennan Bosch in the eighth inning was epic. Eight pitch at bat, pouring rain, rain dripping off the helmet, and he played long ball. Here's the one two. Two balls and two strikes. The rain last night in that at bat for Bosch just really kind of added to the, the atmosphere and the, uh, the overall feel of that home run. Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball to short. Andrews waiting for the hop. High throw 
he pulled him off the bag. It looks like Texas Rangers are in a giving mood once again here today. They lead the American League in airs anyway, and they ranked defensively last, 14th in percentage in the American League, but yet they're in first place in their division. Andrews had plenty of time here, just kind of threw flat-footed, and a lot of times when you throw flat-footed, the elbow tends to drop a little bit, and you see the throws there are too high. Well, he committed three errors last night. They already have one here tonight. And even coming into the series, Ron Washington was talking about how his team fundamentally needed to play a whole lot better. I don't know if Jim will put on anything with Brennan Bosch because he swung the bat so effectively last night, but they can't wait around too long. Harrison throws lots of double plays. Ball one to Bosch. He has thrown 23 double play balls already this year, which is the first, uh, which is number one in the majors. Now the 1 0, and there's a strike 1 and 1. It's been a good home stand for Bosch. How about 8 for 19? These uh, West Division teams haven't scared him at all. Of course, Bosch overall in his career has had good numbers against Rangers pitching. You might recall Brennan made his big league debut in Texas last year. He's been clobbering Texas pitches ever since then. Told you about Harrison splits left handers do a little bit better job against him than right handers because he doesn't like to throw his change up to the left handed batters and they know that and so therefore there's only two pitches uh, they have to be concerned with and that's the curveball and the fastball from Harrison. He will throw that change up quite often to right handed batters. One and two. We're starting to see more and more left handers though start to throw that uh, change up to left handed batters for a number of years. It's been a pitch they've been afraid to throw to lefties because it usually fades down and in and that's where left handers like to hit. And but more and more lefties are starting to throw that change up to the left handed batters. It used to be really a total no no wasn't it? Absolutely. Tom Glavin said that his career uh, didn't take off until he started throwing his change up to left handed hitters. Before that Tom Glavin had a very difficult time. Of getting lefties out. Bosch sends one high in the air to center. Hamilton is on the run, still going to the warning track to haul this one in. Jackson had rounded second base. He retouches the bag and gets back. Let's take a look at the Texas Rangers defensive. Well, we already know the talented uh, Josh Hamilton's in center field. He made a whale of a play there, running that ball down off the bat of. Brennan Bosch in the infield. You've got Young, you've got Andrews, you've got Kinsberg, you've got Napoli at first base today. He was the DH last night. He had a big home run late in the game. And Jorvik and Tori Alba back behind the dish once again. Like Napoli. Hamilton made that play look awfully easy in center field. He's a big guy, too. Here's Ortonez. Last night was one for four. already looking like it's going to be impossible for Jackson to steal second base. Well, not impossible, but nearly impossible. And Harrison taking very little time getting the ball to Tori Alba, and it doesn't appear that Jackson can get a really good gauge on what Harrison's doing as far as his move is concerned. One ball to no strikes on Ordonez. Rialba about 26% in throwing runners out behind the play. Check swing foul. One ball, one strike. Ordonia is another one of those Tigers that has had really good numbers over the years against the Rangers. 337. In with 16 steals in 20 attempts. Harrison, 25 years old, out of Durham, North Carolina. He's a big kid, 6'4, 240. There's the bouncing ball to second, should be two. Kinsler, Andrews, signed to first for the double play. 
It'll go 4 6 3, inning over on our way to the second. by Comerica Bank strength and stability since 1849. Ram trucks, guts, glory, Ram. And by Arby's, try the new Angus Cool Deli sandwich only at Arby's. It's good mood food. Back here at the ballpark, a little bit cloudy and overcast tonight, but good weather nonetheless. 81, our game time temp. No score in this one as Doug Fister goes back to the hill facing Michael Young here in the second. Young and then Cruz and then Moreland. It's watching Michael Young take batting practice today in about the first 15 swings he took. Every single one line drive to right field. And that's how he's made his money in this game. Really good baseball player. Once again on pace for over 200 hits this season. Fisters 1 1. Grounded foul. Take a look at Michael Young's spray chart. 49 knocks the opposite way, 58 up the middle. He will go to left field, but usually you know, he doesn't pull the ball unless it's a hanging breaking ball. And the one two. Two and two on Young. Sister needed just 11 pitches to get through his first inning as a Tiger. There's the 2 2. Young hits a ground ball off the glove. That'll roll to Betamy. He'll have no play, and it's an infield hit. Too bad uh, Fister knocked that ball down because had he not knocked it down, Johnny Peralta would have made that play because they already had Michael Young shaded over towards second base. Johnny Peralta gets there no problem whatsoever. First hit of the ball game for Texas, of the infield variety. Man, yeah, Fister just saw this Texas Rangers team a couple of weeks ago, July 15th, in Texas, and they beat him. And his team didn't score many runs. Imagine that. Fister went seven and two thirds in that game, so he pitched into the eighth, giving up four runs. One zero is in for a strike. One and one on Nelson Cruz. There's a lot of these Texas Rangers that will run. It's a lot like the Los Angeles Angels team. Not everyone's a true base stealer. Uh, but there are certain times when Ron Washington will turn certain guys loose and Michael Young is one of those guys. Down the first baseline but foul. One and two on Cruz. Young's been a pretty good bet when he has attempted in his career 75 percent. 
good situational base dealer. Not a blazer on the base pass. Shattered bat back up the middle into center. Young will hit the bag. He'll go to third, and he is in there. Back to back singles for the Rangers open up the second. An infield hit and a shattered bat single. And sometimes you can make the pitch that you want to make and the hitter you know, still get a base hit. And that was the case there. That ball in off the fist of Cruz, but Cruz so strong, able to muscle that bat, that ball right back up the middle, although pieces of the bat were flying all over the infield. It's going to bring up Mitch Moreland, the designated hitter for the Rangers. Did not have a hit last night, 0 for 3. Moreland has pretty good pop. He's hit 13 homers. Rangers trying to get on the board first here tonight. And there is strike one. Here's one of those uh, situations where Jim obviously hasn't gone out to tell Fister, but his mindset, Jim's mindset is if you're a pitcher in this situation, nobody out, runner on third, forget about that runner on third base. He's going to score. You have to really concentrate on the next guys coming up to the dish in this inning to prevent a big inning. 0 oh 2. One ball, two strikes on Mitch Moreland. Multiple hit games in five of his last ten. Moreland came in batting 269. And the one two. Popped him up. Shallow center field. Rayburn, the second baseman, is going to make the play, and the runners will have to hold. So Moreland unable to get the run in. That's a start for Fister. One gone. And that'll bring up Mike Napoli. Napoli at 294 had a big night last night. He hit the two run shot in the eighth inning, which tied it up. An opposite field home run against Joaquin Benoit. And that's something Napoli has been known for his entire career. Good power. He has 16 home runs this season. Pretty much a fly ball hitter, too. You know, Fister would love to get a ground ball, and he might get that ground ball, but it'll have to work south of the knees against the power hitting Napoli. <laughs> Napoli, a former angel, was dealt to Toronto in the Vernon Wells deal and then uh, quickly sent to Texas. Joining what was already a powerful offensive team. Strike called on the outer edge, and now it's 0 2. Bouncing ball slowly toward third, cut off by Betamit. They go to second one. Relay! Got him a double play. Nice firm throw by Ryan Rayburn. Fister pitching out of a jam here in the second. He got the big ground ball. A 5 4 3 double play.
Presented by the Quarter Pounder with Cheese tonight. Using your cell phone, text Tigers, followed by a space, then the player's uniform number to 37338. Or you can vote online at foxsportsdetroit.com. Well, Doug Fisker able to pitch out of a jam, getting a huge double play ball. And now the Tigers bat in the bottom of the second in a scoreless game. And Cabrera takes ball one from Matt Harrison. Cabrera to be followed by Martinez and Peralta. Ball two. Cabrera is hitting 312. He's already hit 22 home runs and he's closing in on 70 RBIs. But he was telling me before the game today he really hasn't felt comfortable all year long. He says he's been tinkering with his stance day to day. And there's a soft liner, base hit. First Tigers hit of the game. And I simply told him it must be nice uh, to have those kinds of numbers and really not feel like you're swinging the bat the way you're capable of swinging the bat. Either a changeup or a fastball tailing away from Cabrera right off the end of the bat, but he got enough of it to hit over the head of shortstop Elvis Andrews. So the ultra talented Cabrera is aboard now. Tigers have a man on, nobody out for Victor Martinez, who ho hum had just two more hits and an RBI, scored a couple of runs last night. Victor's solid year continues, 62 driven in. Ball one from Harrison. Martinez 320 batting average is now fifth in the American League. So Harrison again falls behind now the count two balls no strikes. This is where Victor said he really has to watch himself when he gets himself in favorable counts like two balls no strikes because his natural tendency most of this year has been to overswing in these situations. Victor has told me that sometimes he prefers to hit with two strikes. How about these numbers though runners on base. Victor at 416, but with the bases empty at just 232. Here's the 3 0. He's taking ball four, and now Harrison has a jam of his own. Single and a walk. By the way, this game tonight is available in crystal clear high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD. It's sponsored by Xfinity from Comcast. Now Johnny Peralta. A couple more hits last night for Johnny. And his average of 317. He is on a collision course with career highs and average home runs and RBIs if he keeps up this pace. First pitch buckles his knees for strike one. The 317 average for Peralta is good for seventh in the American League. Swing and a miss, and now quickly 0 and 2. Harrison was part of the haul that Texas got in that Mark Deshera deal back in 2007 from the Atlanta Braves. Andrews and Felice also coming in that deal. It is very seldom you can get that many quality big league players for just one player. Here's the 0 2. That's fine. When you trade a guy like Teixeira and you get three or four guys back, how many do you hope are going to be solid big league contributors? One really. I mean, you're hoping for one really good player. And Andrews really was the guy in the deal that they felt was going to be a really good player. Felice, they felt he'd be good, but they didn't think he'd be as good as he is. One and two. High fly ball. Foul ground, third base side. Young for the out. And the runners will hold. 
First out of the inning. Now Ryan Rayburn. The thing about that deal that was made with Texas and Atlanta is that Teixeira decided not to stay in Atlanta very long, right? Of course, Teixeira now making his home in New York and having a huge year. Tigers last night were three for 16 with men in scoring position. And yet they came away with the victory. Rayburn takes ball one. Ryan a shot to play second base tonight. Obviously his playing time has been cut into severely with the return of Carlos Guillen. And also with the year that Brendan Bosch is having in the outfield. Carlos is hanging out tonight gets a night off. And Rayburn grounds it foul. Nine homers this year for Ryan he's knocked in 32. But the return of Guillen gives the Tigers another veteran hitter. Quality big league player and that has made a few all star teams. Big home run against Jared Weaver on Sunday. Here's the 1 1 outside. Two balls, one strike on Rayburn. Harrison really likes his fastball. He'll cut it, he'll sink it, he'll run it. But the majority of the pitches that he throws is that fastball anywhere from 88 to 92 miles an hour. Every now and then he will reach back to get in 94, but not very often. Harrison had that surgery that Jeremy Bonderman had a couple of years ago where they had to remove a rib. Didn't he pitch against us in Texas while he was passing a kidney stone, too? Was that him? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> He's tough. That's a tough guy. That's right. a tough cookie. <laughs> Here's the 2 1. It's outside. They had that uh, thoracic outlet syndrome surgery. And uh, he has said that since coming back, his velocity has gotten a little bit better. But uh, Mike Maddox says the reason that he's pitched so well is he's just, you know, like most kids, learn to pitch, getting more experience. 3 and 1. Line to right field, base hit. Cabrera coming to third. They're going to send him home. Ball is bobbled by Cruz. Throw comes to third base, and he is out there. Boy, can Cruz throw. Oh, my goodness. I think it was a clothesline. It's a good thing that he bobbled the ball in right field because he would have had a play on Cabrera as well. The ball is whistled the opposite way by Rayburn. They're going to score one run here with Cabrera taking off from second base. Had he not bobbled the ball, he would have had a play on Cabrera, but when he bobbled it, he came up and threw, I mean, a clothesline, one hopper to third base, and he threw Victor Martinez out by about three, four steps. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Young had enough time to put two hands on the glove. Oh, my goodness. So Cruz picks up another assist. It's one nothing Detroit. There are two outs now. I believe that is the 18th assist this year and by Texas Rangers outfielders. You're not going to see a better throwing arm from right field than that. The sixth assist for Mr. Cruz. Single RBI second on the throw and the put out goes nine five that ought to cover everything. Avila batting 281 had a huge night last night as well. Homer knocked in three. One ball, one strike. That's a base hit. 
Rayburn coming home. They're going to try and score him. Here comes the throw to the pipe. Safe. A broken bat RBI single for Alex Avila. It's a great jump off second base by Ryan Rayburn. And because Rayburn got such a really good jump off second base, he knew that ball was going to drop. Gene Lamont was waving that left hand very aggressively, and Rayburn needed to make an outstanding hook slide to make it in safely around the tag of Tori Alba. Great hook slide. Old fashioned hook slide. And so it's 2 0, and here is Betamy. And there is ball one. Tigers doing a little bit better here tonight so far with merging scoring position. You mentioned last night they weren't very good in that regard. How about seven for ten against Harrison? Shot back out of play. This is a, a great example of Jim Leland finding a spot to rest one of his veterans and you plug in a guy that had really good success against that night starting pitcher. So Rayburn adds to that success. Betamid had two hits in the ball game last night. Folks, that one foul. One and two. Tigers get a couple of runs. Betamid batting with two outs and a runner at first. Two and two. Wilson as a Tiger is hitting 300 in nine games. He's also homered and knocked in four. And a strike called on the outer edge. Ending the inning, but the Tigers score first. They get a couple of runs, and you're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. You by AT&T. 30 minutes or less in theaters August 12th, rated R. And by new Nestle Skinny Cow Candy, have your candy and eat it too. Back here in downtown Detroit, back at Comerica Park, as the Tigers have taken a 2-0 lead here against the Texas Rangers. And earlier today, the Detroit Pistons announced they have a new head coach. It's our pleasure to introduce to you the new head coach, Lawrence Frank. And uh, Coach, welcome to the Motor City. We appreciate you stopping by. and. Uh, your thoughts about coming to Detroit it's ought to be exciting for you. It's extremely exciting. Uh, you know, it's a, I think it's a, the perfect time. Uh, when you look at the success of the Pistons organization, you look over the last 10 years, obviously there's been a lot of focus what's happened over the last couple years, but there's a standards of excellence. And I think we have to reclaim that. And we have to reclaim that culture that was so good for Detroit for so many years. Here's the first pitch, a strike called on David Murphy as we get the third inning underway. And, uh, Coach, you talked about uh, the history of this franchise. How important was that to you? Obviously, this is a good opportunity for you, but there has been a lot of success here in the past. Does that bring a certain amount of pressure? 
Uh, you know, but I think you invite it. I, I think that it's a whole lot easier to be able to convince guys to do what needs to be done when there's past evidence. A little bit harder when you're going on blind faith. But this organization has always embodied the city when it's been at its best. A blue-collar, lunch pail work ethic, you know, earning your way every single day. And we have to get back to that. Coach, tell some of the uh, fans here in Detroit what you've been doing the last couple of years in between your last opportunity as a head coach. Sure. The, uh, this past season, I was assistant coach with the Boston Celtics. Uh, so that was a, a tremendous run. It was great. And we're kind of limited what we can talk about because we have that L word, the lockout. Uh, but it was an unbelievable experience uh, to be around the types of guys that I was. Prior to that, I was let go. Uh, or as my daughter say, Daddy, you were fired uh, <laughs> uh, in New Jersey uh, the previous November. Uh, but I had a, a great run in New Jersey. I was seven years as the head coach, ten years overall. Uh, so a lot of great experiences, uh, but I'm really looking forward to being here in Detroit. What will you take from the first opportunity you had in New Jersey, getting now the second opportunity to be a head coach? I mean, what do you learn the first time around that maybe you'll instill now here in Detroit? Yeah, well, I'm hoping I'm a whole lot smarter and wiser, but it's ironic uh, how small the world it is. I remember probably 15 years ago, I was out with, uh, with the late, great uh, Coach Chuck Daly. And I remember sitting with him and picking his brain. And I was, just, I was just an advanced scout at the time with the Vancouver Grizzlies. And he said, trust me in this. You'll be a whole lot better head coach the second time than the first. And I think you can see why. It's just because all the experiences that you've had that, that's led up to this point, you, you just feel a whole lot different about the game, about yourself, about the changes and the improvements you need to make. And that's the great thing about it is you're constantly trying to get better. You're already Tori Alba, the batter here as the Tigers lead Texas 2 to nothing. We're chatting with Lawrence Frank, who was introduced today as the new head coach of the Detroit Pistons. And uh, you mentioned work ethic, uh, Lawrence, and I want to talk to you about that because apparently your reputation is you're an early morning guy. You like to get at it very early and uh, get going real quick. So talk about your work ethic. Well, you don't get this ugly for a reason. Um, the, uh, I, w I wasn't born this way. Uh, you know, I don't like to make a big deal of, of you know, I, I, look, I think everyone works hard. You know, I mean, everything here. I think you, you do what you think you need to do in order to get the job done right, and, and that's what we're about. And I think getting back to reclaiming that culture that we talked about, I think it starts with a work ethic. But you have to be about what you talk about. We have to embody that sort of work ethic, the accountability, the commitment, and it starts with me and it starts with our coaching staff. Let's talk about your philosophy a little bit. I've read some things that you're a defensive-minded coach, and obviously you feel you win championships uh, playing defense first. Without a doubt, I think it's probably no different than, than in baseball, right? Sure. Pitching in defense usually leads to the team that's the, the last team holding that trophy, and, and that's what basketball, through the history of the game, is it starts on the defensive end, you have to be able to rebound the basketball. And the elite teams, they can do it on both ends. But in terms of establishing who we're going to be, if you had to pick one over the other, it starts on a defensive end. And, and that's the toughest because there's going to be confrontation involved because virtually anyone who's ever played the game, they love offense. They love taking sure. shots. Uh, it's the other end that that's where you got to fight that much harder and you got to get, get past hard. Talk about your career path a little bit. I mean, when did it uh, first become known to you that this is the path that you wanted to take to be a head coach in the NBA. Yeah, well, I have to thank a lot of my youth coaches because in high school, I was like that bad Hollywood actor. I heard one word, cut, but they kept on saying it, cut, <laughs> cut, cut. So I, I always loved playing. I loved, I loved all sports, uh, but basketball w was my passion. So I knew probably around that I was 13 that I wanted to become a coach. So my path was always dedicated in terms of learning from the best. So I'd go to, you know, like a five-star basketball camp, which is big back east, and learn from guys like Chuck Daly or Hubie Brown. Uh, I went to Indiana University, and I hate to disappoint the Alumni Association, strictly just to learn from Coach Knight. Uh, you know, I went there as a student manager because I wanted to soak up all his knowledge, and uh, I learned a great deal both on and off the court. So I was fortunate. And then basically, because I went to Indiana, I got hired sight unseen at Marquette University as a graduate assistant coach. And then from there, I spent five years in the college ranks and this is 15 total years in the NBA so I've been incredibly incredibly fortunate. Mm -hmm. Ian Kinsler the batter here two balls one strike to count Kinsler fouls it straight back two and two as the Rangers bat here in the third with one on and one out Tigers up by a two nothing score and uh, here's some footage of the uh, announcement earlier today by Joe Dumars as Lawrence Frank takes over as the head coach of the Detroit Pistons and Lawrence one of the things I, I was curious about is 
coming in as a visitor with whether it was New Jersey or the Boston Celtics, what was your impression as an outsider at that point? As that ball is lined right at Bob of Piston fans and uh, the history of this club here in Detroit. As an outsider looking in, what was your impression of coming to Detroit? Well, incredible, incredible passion. And you think about, I think it was what, 259 consecutive sellouts, right. whatever the stretch was. But I remember still in 2004, Game Seven, Eastern Conference Semifinals. You know, people talk about the crowd being like six man. They were the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. I mean, Ben Wallace. But I can't even say his name, so we didn't even say that. <laughs> no, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> that, that'll cost us some money. But the but the, the fans are unbelievable, and and the passion they bring. This is an incredible sports town. And I think obviously we see here by the crowd here at the Tigers game, they support all their sports. And something to be proud of, and, and we got to get them back to cheer for what we're all about. Lawrence, we appreciate you taking time to stop up tonight. Best of luck to you uh, when the Pistons begin playing again, and uh, thank you for the visit. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks thank very you. much. Lawrence Frank and his thoughts, new head coach of your Detroit Pistons. Nice plays in this game and both have come off the bat of the youngster Elvis Andrews back in the first inning he Picked what looked like a base hit up the middle against Andrews and then he made a diving sprawling grab getting to his feet To throw Andrews out in that last half inning so nice work by Doug Fister Here's a bunt by Jackson who's gonna take it indecision cost the Rangers Outstanding job by Austin Jackson who continues to bunt for a base hit at least once a series successfully Leadoff man is on And lack of communication here between Tori Alba and Harrison the pitcher I don't know if Tori Alba gets Jackson anyway But they both slowed down as they approached the baseball and then by the time Tori Alba picked it up The fleet foot of Jackson was crossing the bag that is the seventh bunt hit for Austin Jackson. And a good portion of those have come in the last couple of weeks. To go with his nine sack bunts. So it appears at least that that part of his game is really starting to improve quite a bit. Bosch is showing bunt. We've seen Bosch bunt for a base hit as well this year down toward third base. Michael Young playing about five steps in back of that third base bag. It's very inviting for even a slugger. Uh, like Brennan Bosch. Here's the 1 0. 2 0 on Bosch. Tiger's got a couple of runs in the second. RBI hits by Rayburn and Avila. Bosch hit a ball a ton to center field his first time up that Josh Hamilton made a nice running play on. Two always low. Three balls, no strikes. 
Tigers now have four hits here this evening, three for the Rangers. And with the wind blowing out you know, to right field at the pace that it's blowing right now, and Jim Leland might turn Brennan Bosch loose here. Three balls, no strikes. Three and one. Anything up in the air to right field today is going to carry out of here. Take a look at uh, the flags blowing in that direction. You can see why Harrison gets so many ground balls that turn into double plays because it's hard to get a jump off of him when you're standing on first base. Even a really good base dealer like Jackson. He did a really nice job of keeping Jackson at first base in the first inning and eventually got a double play. Way high. That's ball four. And now something brewing here for the Tigers. Right now we go back to the studio. Time for a game break with Mickey York. Absolutely. There are some people uh, in Boston that have said that Adrian Gonzalez has had a really huge effect on David Ortiz and the fact that he is now driving that ball the opposite way as much as he is these days. Of course, that's what Gonzalez does a lot of. And that's what Ortiz has said the last time we were in Boston. One of the effects that Gonzalez has had on him. The Tigers now have something going here. We're in the third with two on nobody out. Maglio coming up. Would not be shocked here on the first or second pitch to see Jim maybe put the runners in motion and force Maglio or Donez in a swing in the bat. You really only do that with guys that you trust that can put the ball in play with good hand eye coordination. The last thing they want to do is hit into another double play. One ball, no strikes on Ordonez. Maglio hit into the 4 6 3 back in the first. And he chops one again to the second baseman. Kinsler will tag the runner, throw to first, and he'll get the double play. That is now the 25th induced double play this year. While Harrison has been on the mound, which is the most in the major leagues. The only thing that you can do there if you're Brennan Bosch one you can stop or two you simply run Kinsler over and you prevent him from completing the double play. We've seen a few base runners do that. There are the 25 double play ground balls that you talked about Tyler Chatwood of the Angels and CJ Wilson on that list. Jackson at third down with two outs and Cabrera trying to knock him in. Couldn't hold up. One ball, one strike. And before Victor Martinez came on the scene, there would be no way with two outs and a base open that Ron Washington would be pitching to Miguel Cabrera. Yeah, but he knows if he puts him on, he has to deal with the best hitter in the league with runners in the scoring position, and that would be Victor. Yeah, the landscape has changed in the Tigers starting lineup. Victor came in at 404 with men in scoring position. Straightens him up. Two and one on Cabrera. Harrison pitched mostly out of the pen last year. Talked about that surgery he had, which forced him to miss the final 14 weeks of 09. Now the 2 1. Two nine four ERA coming into this one here today. Ground 
Ground ball. Fair inside the bag at third. That'll get a run in. Cabrera rounds the bag. He'll go to second, and he is in with an RBI double. Another clutch hit for Miguel. 3 0. It was an 89 mile per hour cut fastball, and Cabrera didn't hit it all that hard. But Michael Young, about five feet off the line at third base with a step and a dive, not able to get there and knock it down and prevent that ball from getting down in that left field corner. 69 RBIs this year for Cabrera. 325 career doubles. And then the second hit of the night for Miguel this evening. Here's Martinez. He looks at strike one on the outer edge. Victor had a base on balls his first time up. One ball, one strike. Harrison's last start was a really good one. He won against Minnesota, gave up just one run in seven and a third, but already the Tigers had put three up there on him. And he missed again, two and one. The Rangers lead in the West shrunk to one last night after losing here in Detroit. The Angels won their game. And meanwhile, the Tigers are three up in the Central. And Tigers have already given a Fister more run support in this game alone than he had gotten in his 20 21 starts with his old club. Imagine that. It's kind of hard to believe, really. I mean, they it's averaged under two runs a game in 21 starts of Fisters. It, it almost seems impossible. But we know that Seattle offense is really struggling and it has been anemic, but he must has followed him around. He must feel like a kid in a candy store right now. Talking to his battery mates, Avila. Three and two. The inning started with a bunt single and a walk, but then a double play looked like it might get Harrison out of trouble. And that's when Cabrera stepped up and doubled in a run. Now Victor who bats 404 with men in scoring position trying to drive in another. Fouled away. Fifty five pitches for Harrison. Twenty eight strikes, twenty seven balls. The sweat dripping off his cap. Facing Cabrera and Martinez make me sweat too. <laughs> That's a good point. Three and two. Ground ball foul. Victor had a walk in the second inning. On the homestand, seven hits, seven for 19. Had a good series against the Angels. Follow that up with a good game last night. Side Kinsler cuts it off. That'll end the inning. However, the Tigers pick up another on the two out hit by Cabrera.
winning it all to coming into spring training and nobody talking about us. Uh, you know, and they've already forgotten um, that we got there and um, what what a great season we had last year and talking about uh, Boston and the Yankees. And uh, so that, that's where the hunger comes from. Um, I just wanted to prove we can uh, get back there, be a team uh, that's going to get back there for a long time and uh, push forward from there. Well, they certainly have a chance to get back there this year. They have a very good ball club, but they've run into a pretty good ball club in the Tigers here. You know what they say, and yeah, no one remembers who finishes second. As the Rangers did last year to San Francisco in the World Series. Hamilton, Young, and Cruz here in the fourth. Fisker's 0 1 is slammed toward left field, slicing. That is down. It's extra bases as it rattles around the corner. Hamilton goes to second, leadoff double. Josh Hamilton is one of the more talented players in this game. There's not anything on the baseball field that he cannot do and do very well. Two base hit is the fourth hit of the night for Texas. 22 of them on the year now for Hamilton. Michael Young hits a ground ball left side. Then he throws him out. Runner has to hold. Unproductive at bat there by Michael Young, and he's a little frustrated with himself. So Young unable to move the runner up. It's going to bring up Nelson Cruz, who tonight has a single and an assist as well from the outfield. 326 this year with men in scoring position for Cruz. I mentioned the Tigers have given Fister three runs to work with. Back on June 21st, he got five runs of support, which is the only time in the last seven starts he's got more than one run. So it's been a huge drought for Fister in terms of getting run support. But three early ones tonight. For the new Tiger right hander. He has fallen behind Cruz here, but the majority of the batters here today he has gotten ahead of. And he is 11 of 14 in first pitch strikes, and a good majority of those hitters, he's been at least no balls in two strikes or one in two. So that's how you stay out of jams and stay out of trouble. In a little bit of a bind here, though. Three and oh. Moreland waiting on deck. Oh. Make it three and one on Cruz. It's a good pitch there. Three balls, no strikes. And it looked like Cruz had the green light. If he would have liked this pitch, he probably would have took a pretty good swing at it. Strike three and two. He's got good command. If you're just joining us, we told you that Fister does not throw a slider, but he has a curve and a changeup and a couple different fastballs. Well, that's a sinker ball there, a little fading action as it gets into the home plate hitting zone. Driven to right field on the line. Maglio going back. This one is over his head and off the wall. He wears us out. Hamilton will score and Cruz goes into second with an RBI double. His second hit of this game. The difference there uh, with Cruz being able to hit that ball as hard as he hit it is the fact that for one of the few times tonight, Fister fell behind the hit. He worked the count back to three and two and tried to get on the outside with another fastball, and Cruz wasn't having any of that. Halfway up the wall. On the line. Fifth hit of the game for Texas. And the RBI for Cruz is 72nd of the year. Rangers are on the board with only one out. 
Mitch Moreland is 0 for 1 with a pop up. One and one. Off the mask of Alex Avila, who takes another direct hit. One ball, two strikes. Many of those has he gotten like in the last two weeks? Quite a few. I know my good buddy, uh, who's the third base umpire tonight, Curran Danley. You know, the last couple of years have taken some direct shots exactly like that, and he's had to miss quite a bit of time. Ground ball to the right side. Rayburn has it there. Moreland is out. Advance the runner, and there are two gone. Well, our new edition of Tigers Weekly provides current examples as to why baseball lives on as America's pastime and no more and nowhere more than here in Detroit. It's a look at the game we love. It's passed on through generations of Tigers players and fans. Tigers Weekly premieres Friday at 7 right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Make your plans to tune it in. And now Mike Napoli with two outs. He bounced into a double play his first time up. And ball one to Napoli. A big game last night, couple of hits, including a homer. He has a six game hitting streak. And he's one guy that didn't want to see the month of July in. 443 last month. Two and one. Yeah, the Rangers are, are without uh, their talented third baseman, Adrian Beltre, who made an all star team this year for them. And Napoli picked up some of that slack. Last couple of weeks. Chopped to the left side of the infield off the glove of Benemy. That'll get a run in. And that'll make it a three to two game. That's a tough break there for Fister. With Napoli running, it appears that Bedemi probably created a little bit more of a difficult hop than he needed to do. So it was a short hop, and he just wasn't able to field it. It's also a play where, just by moving his feet in or back, he probably could have created a better hop. E5 on the play, 3 2 ball game. David Murphy, the batter. Murphy had a base hit back in the third, leading off the inning, but did not score. We'll shoot that one foul back out of play. And quickly 0-2. And, and the Houston, Texas native, David Murphy, played his college ball at Baylor. The 0-2. Popped up. Foul ground is their room. Benemy, there he is to end the inning. They get a couple of runs, and we'll go to the bottom of the fourth.
talked this year a lot about Johnny Peralta from an offensive standpoint and just how he makes all the routine plays. But last night he made a couple of dazzling plays, one to his right, the other one to his left. But the one thing that amazes you about both plays is the accuracy of the throwing arm and throwing from an unorthodox position. But he hits Cabrera right in the chest. Well, Matt Harrison right back in this ball game now. It's three to two in favor of Detroit as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Peralta, Rayburn, and Avila. Johnny waves and misses 0 2. Good change piece there by Harrison. And he really hasn't been able to get to too many change ups today. But it's his second best hit. Here it is. Ball high, 1 and 2 on Peralta. Johnny 0 for 1 with a pop up. Pulled to third, fair ball over the bag. Peralta heading to second base. He's going to get in there with a double. Lead off man on Tiger Johnny Peralta with a two base hit. Harrison tried the back door. Uh, Peralta with a cut fastball at 86 miles an hour. Johnny was able to reach out and grab it and hit a seed right past Michael Young. It's the second time a ball has been whistled uh, past Young today. Cabrera doubled. Earlier in the game. Now Ryan Rayburn. Tigers will take another one of those base hits to right field like Rayburn did his first time up today. Instead he pulls it to the shortstop Andrews going to be an impossible play and everybody is safe. That's a wise decision by Peralta too. We saw Andrews. In the game last night with runners on first and second and Brennan Bosch hit a ball just like that in the hole. And Andrews came up and got the force out at third base. And Johnny Peralta not taking off. He knows he can't get to third base. And had he tried to get there, Andrews would have made a play on him. Well, the Tigers have two hits now in this inning, trying to come right back after giving up a pair of runs in the third. There's Avila. He singled one in, and now Rayburn continues his assault on Harrison, eight for eleven. Michael Young looking for the bunt at third base. Not so much at first base, but Michael Young, he's anticipating a possible bunt. Oh, and one out of Avila. Alex now three out of four with four RBIs. The first two games. Take a look at the technique here and take a look where the bat is when it makes contact. You see the plate? Alex Avila kind of stabs at it. He doesn't bend his knees. And when you stab at it, usually you're not really that successful at getting that bunt down. Your son a good bunter? Does he ever have to bunt? Yeah, he is. He's a really good bunter, actually. I mean, you really have to work at it. I mean, there's a technique to it. I mean, most pitchers in bunting situations, they throw the ball up in the strike zone, and they want you to try to bunt that ball because they want you to pop it up. But when the balls are down, you got to get down there with your knees. Not just reach with the bat, but your knees have to bend, too, to give you a really good opportunity of bunting the ball into fair territory and making a quality bunt. That's bunted back toward the mound. He moved the runners up. Nicely done. Also almost beat that out. Avila's out by a step. Sacrifice advances the runners. We saw the inability last night of Andrews. And laying down a sacrifice, but that hurt the Rangers tonight. Avila is able to get it down. Yes, he did. Lots of high fives in that dugout. Rangers are going to play the infield in. Wilson Bedebeet is having a really nice year with runners in scoring position. Those are the numbers 344. Third sacrifice bunt of this season for Avila. Fouls it back 0-1. Benamit struck out to end the second. 
He also made an air in the last half inning, which allowed that second run to score for the Rangers. He'd like to get a couple more right back for his club. Another big swing, fouled straight back, and the count is 0 and 2 on Betamir. Wilson, two out of five in the series. The advantage here of the drawn in infield. Betamit in nine games with the Tigers has driven in four runs. Overall, this series knocked in 32. A very solid 283 average coming in. Inning started with a double by Peralta, infield hit by Rayburn. They're both in scoring position now. Swing and a miss, and Benavit goes down. That's a huge strikeout for Matt Harrison. His second strikeout of the game, both of them, Benavit. Slow curveball there, and a dandy. Infield will relax now as Austin Jackson steps in with two outs. They push him back. Ball one with two outs. I don't know why the corner infielders are playing so close. But if Jackson hits one on the hard firm on the ground firm in the direction of those two guys, two feet to either side, he's going to get himself a base hit. Napoli at first base is at the cut of the grass. And same with Young at third. Two and all the count. Three to two, Tigers lead here. They have runners at second and third. Jackson had a bunt single, scored a run back in the third. He's been on base twice in this one, also reaching out an error. Rangers have committed four errors in this series already. And a 2 0. 2 and 1 on Jackson. It's kind of surprising that they are in first place and have had the kind of year that they've had, and they've been as poor. As they've been defensively. Well, it goes back to the saying pitching a defense wins for you, doesn't it? And uh, the defensive end has not been there. Ultimately, they're going to have to get better defensive if they're going to get back to where they hope to get back to uh, this year. Way high, three and one. Bosch waiting on deck. Pitching wise, they've certainly held up their end of the bargain. And uh, we all know they can mash. They're a very good offensive team, but with the glove, not so good. Swing and a miss. Three and two on Jackson. You have to stay ready for your fastball. And regardless of the two off speed pitches that uh, Harrison has thrown to Jackson, he threw him a curveball in a 2 1 count. And he came back with a changeup there in a 3 1 count. And, but you still have to stay ready for your fastball as a hitter with two strikes. Torrealba a trip to the mound. Yeah, Rayburn's been on second base for a couple of batters now, and this might be a situation where they're just simply talking about changing the signs, or it may be a situation where Torby Torrealba already tells Harrison what he's going to throw, and he puts down no sign. Hello. 
Three and two. He walked him. That's going to load the bases. Hey fans, 15 game ticket packages for the remainder of the season are on sale now for as little as $210. Purchase now and receive a complimentary deluxe overnight stay at the Motor City Casino Hotel. Restrictions do apply. Call 313-471-BALL or visit Tigers.com. If you've never been to the Motor City Casino Hotel, it's a nice spot. Bosch stepping in here now with the bases loaded last night. It turned out he hit the game winner. He had a classic at bat in the eighth. It was against Adams, the newcomer from the San Diego Padres, and a one two pitch absolutely drilled by Brennan Bosch. He was fired up too, and rightfully so. But what he said to. Uh the post game last night was a Trev. Trevor Trev that how he felt something good was going to happen in that at bat. He said he was in that zone where the game just seemed to slow down for him. So now Bosch who has one grand slam in his back pocket. And then we told you if you weren't with us earlier that Harrison's numbers against left handers aren't that good. Left handers were hitting him close to a 300 clip at start of play today. High fly ball right field coming in is Cruz. He's going to have room, and just like that, the threat is over. No runs. They get a couple of hits and leave three. Cy Young winner had the lowest ERA with 12 or more losses. Since 01, which Cy Young winner had the lowest ERA with 12 or more losses? I don't uh, oftentimes see a guy win the Cy Young with at least 12 losses, but. And uh, that's why we're asking because Fisker comes in at 3 and 12, but a very good ERA. And the Tigers lead this one three to two as we go to the top of the fifth inning. Fister back to the hill. Yarvi Torrealba leads it off. Torrealba and then Kinsler and then Andrews. Three runs, seven hits. Detroit Rangers, two runs, five hits. Torrealba reached on a fielder's choice. He's back in the third. There's a strike. We we're talking last night about how this is a very potent offensive team, yet they don't strike out a whole lot. They struck out only twice the entire game last night. And they haven't fanned tonight. That's a game where shirts have started, too. Right. In the air toward right center field, Jackson is on his horse. He is not going to get this one. It'll go to the warning track. Extra bases for Tori Alba. And a leadoff double. 
Six hits tonight for Texas. Jackson must have been shading uh, Tori Alba into left center field because when the ball went up, it looked like Jackson was going to have no chance at getting over there and catching it. And we don't say that very often when balls stay in the air as long as this one did. And Jackson's in center. Twenty-one doubles now for Tori Alba, their number nine hitter. Giving them a chance to score the tying run. Shot to right field by Kinsler on the line, right at Ordonez, and the runner will not move up. That's a good effort by Kinsler. He didn't get rewarded for what he was trying to do, but it's a good effort. Nobody on. Runner on second, excuse me, nobody out. He was trying to hit the ball exactly where he hit it. Kinsler now is one for his last 29. It's a tough stretch for him. There's Elvis Andrews. 268 this year with the runner in scoring position. Ball one from Fister. Andrews only 22 years of age. He finished second in the rookie of the year voting a couple of years ago, 2009. That's the year Andrew Bailey won. And it was also the year that Rick Porcello finished third right behind Andrews. A couple of young kids. Bailey out of nowhere won that award that year. Porcello's pitching some of the best baseball we've seen him pitch in his very young career as a Tiger. He won five games in the month of July and he still couldn't get Tigers pitcher of the month. <laughs> that's, that's because Verlander's on the staff. That's terrible. <laughs> Man was five and zero. Oh. That's true. How do you win five games and that guy won the award? Right <laughs> Back up the middle. Rayburn, nice play to stop it. But it's going to be an infield hit for Andrews. First and third now with one out. And here comes Hamilton. Drilled one down the left field line in his last at bat, a double to start the fourth. Swing and a miss. Ground ball, second base side, could be two. There's one. And he threw it away. The run will score. Hamilton will hold at first base as Fister runs it down, and the Rangers have tied the game. Peralta appeared to have enough time to turn this one over. Really nice, firm feed by. Now Ryan Rayburn and Peralta threw the ball in. Just did not make a good throw. Cabrera not able to pick it. Three three ball game. And that'll bring up Michael Young. Bouncing ball to short. Johnny has this one. He'll flip the second for the force, ending the inning. But the Rangers tied up. We go to the bottom of the fifth.
Had the lowest DRA with 12 or more losses. King Felix. Absolutely. Last year, an ERA of 2.27. Trying to think of a Cy Young winner that had 12 losses oh. before him. Maglio stepping up there now in a brand new ball game. 3 3. Ordonez Cabrera Martinez. One ball, one strike. New life now for Matt Harrison. He gave up two in the second, one in the third. Identical numbers on the board now. Three, seven, and one for both sides. Banks takes just off the plate. Three and one. Harrison now trying to navigate through the middle of the Tigers lineup three four and five coming up. Off speed he's out in front three and two. Harrison has shown the ability tonight to throw an off speed pitch. In a fastball count and get some swings and misses. That one is lined to left. Another one and Maglio lines it for his first hit of the night after a couple of double play balls. Well, back to back change ups, and this is really not that bad a pitch. It appears to be at the bottom of the strike zone, but Maglio had an idea that he would get the all speed pitch. He stayed with it long enough and to hit a seed in the left field. Now Cabrera, single and a double for Miguel. Ball one. Eighth hit of the game for Detroit. Swing and a miss and a big swing there by Miguel one ball one strike. Harrison was on his way to playing college ball at North Carolina State and then a few years back Atlanta drafted him in the third round he decided that's high enough I'm going pro and he did. And then we mentioned he was traded in that deal for Mark to share. Terry's had a nice day so far he told me before the game he wasn't feeling all that comfortable with the way that he's been swinging the bat lately but he is two for two with a ribby and a run scored so far tonight. Two on Miguel. If you're Harrison and if you're Ron Washington, the manager of the Texas Rangers, you'd like to see some contact here on two and two. You don't want to run the risk of the count being three and two, and Jim just might start Maglio on a three two count to stay out of a double play. Ground ball to third. Nice play by Young. There's one. There's two. Boy, oh boy. Another double play ball induced by Matt Harrison, although that one was a bullet and a nice play by Young. That is 26 of them this year for Harrison. Around the horn, 5 4 3. Here's Martinez with the bases empty. Rangers have induced 124 double plays, which leads the major leagues. And we can see why. They've gotten three tonight. One and one on Martinez. Victor has a walk and a ground out this evening. Breaking ball loops in for a strike. One and two.
One and two. Ninety one pitches now for Harrison. We're here in the fifth inning. And the one two pitch. Shot toward right field. Slicing. It's a foul ball. At the trade deadline, the Texas Rangers acquired a couple of relief pitchers. And Ron Washington told me yesterday, although their MO is for their starters to go out there and not look over their shoulders and pretty much finish what they start in the heat that they play in in Texas and their bullpen struggling a little bit. Those two added pieces are going to really allow him to match up well uh, late in ball games with the added additions. Yeah, no doubt. We talked about the fact last night that the Rangers went really deep into the postseason, obviously getting to the World Series last year. So their starters threw a lot of innings. There's a ball. In fact, Harrison tonight has already established career highs in starts and innings. And we still have a little under two months left. Here's the 2 2. Little chopper back up the middle. Here comes Andrews. Martinez is out. And the inning is over. No runs, one hit, nobody left. On our way to the six. In the uh, mid 80s, uh, Tom House used to be the pitching coach of the Texas Rangers, and he would advocate throwing footballs as part of uh, workout processes. And uh, look what they were doing today. Well, this is how they get to conditioning in. The guys are just kind of having fun throwing the Nerf footballs for a while, but then I watched them later on, and it was almost like the strength and fitness conditioning coach was a quarterback, and he had all of the relief pitchers and some of the starters kind of running patterns out there. I guess football is back. It's fouled back out of play. Nelson Cruz is the batter here as we play in the sixth inning. All of the uh, relievers were out there for Texas before the game. Chuck and the old, well, I guess it was a big skin. I don't know what those were made of. It's kind of a creative way to get your running in because just the regular running that they do on a daily basis, it just becomes tiresome monotonous. and monotonous. So they figure out another way to get the conditioning in. One ball, two strikes on Cruz. There's a ground ball foul outside of the bag at third. So Fister has gone five innings in his Tigers debut so far. He has given up three runs on seven hits. And he has done just as we thought he would do. 
He's thrown a lot of strikes. A lot of first pitch strikes. And he's fielded his position. One out. Let's go back to the studio now. Game break time in Mickey York. All right, Nick, thank you very much. White Sox really haven't played all that well since they dealt Edwin Jackson. There's a strike call. I'm really starting to wonder about the White Sox because I mean, every time we play them, we see that lineup that they have, which is a very talented lineup. And their pitching seems to be deep in the starting rotation. The 0 1. But for whatever reason this year, they've not been able to put together that one streak that they've needed. Nope, they have not. Offense is underachieving, yeah. especially in the middle of the order. And they came in five and a half back in the central behind the Tigers, who also led Cleveland by three. 0 and 2 on Mitch Moreland. That's rolled foul. Here the Tigers led three nothing but Texas got two in the fourth one in the fifth and this Texas Rangers team heads home for a series against the Cleveland Indians when they leave Comerica Park and Ubaldo Jimenez will be making his debut in the American League against Texas flared to left field right at Bosch two gone. How big of a pickup do you think Jimenez will end up being for Cleveland? I think it's going to be a really good pickup for them, not only for this year, but for the next couple of years. They've got him under control, and he's also young. And we also talked about the fact that if he goes out this year and really pitches well, and they want to flip him and get those prospects back, they can do that too. Mike Napoli fouls it off. A lot of people were calling that a really gutsy move by the Cleveland Indians but if you think of it that way of them being able to flip him if they choose to do so it's not really that much of a gamble of course Jimenez has to uphold his end of the bar true one ball one strike Fisker's pitch count has been in much better shape than Harrison's has been all night long. That was just the 82nd pitch thrown by the Tiger right hander. And the 1 2 outside, two balls, two strikes. And Harrison is pitching against a team here tonight, uh, the Texas Rangers, that has given him some problems in his career. One win and three losses against Texas for Fisker. The 2 2. Rounded toward third. Betamy backs up. And Napoli is out by a wide margin. One, two, three inning for Doug Fisker. Nicely done. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Three, three.
fight. Freeze Cam, and we're going to talk about a couple of guys going the opposite way for base hits. It was Rayburn, it was Avila earlier in the game, and Cabrera. And he doubled, he pulled his down in the left field corner for a double his second time up. Coors Light Freeze Cam always brought to you by your frost brewed Coors Light. Nice concentration tonight by a few of the Tigers' batters. And so we go to the bottom of the sixth inning now here at the ballpark. Still tied at three. Three runs, eight hits. Detroit, three runs, seven hits for Texas. First pitch is at the knees. And a strike called on Peralta. Pleasant night here tonight, weather wise. Yeah, really nice. It was really hot and humid last night, even through the rain. It was 81 at game time tonight. Lots of cloud cover. Here's the 0 1. Texas kind of enjoying this weather because they know what awaits them when they get back to Texas. 110. Wow. That is just not pleasant. The 0 2. Johnny in the ballgame tonight with a double and a pop up, one for two. Skies this one in the air to center field. Hamilton is under it. One gone. Hey fans, when the game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live as we bring you all the highlights, reaction, and analysis. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios and uh, here at the ballpark immediately after the game on Fox Sports Detroit. Mickey York manning the studios back in Southfield, Michigan. Here's Ryan Rayburn. How about Mickey's lead into the Bosch home run last night in the postgame show? He was out of control, wasn't he? <laughs> he started singing, swinging in the rain. <laughs> Mickey. He was amped up. <laughs> you gotta love Mick. The 1-0 the one is outside 2-0. Oh. Rayburn a couple of hits. And Bosch indeed was swinging in the rain last night. The home run, the difference. We see you. Here's, nope, he steps off. Now the 2 0. There's a strike 2 and 1. 94. Uh, that has been probably the best fastball that Harrison has thrown here tonight. They got three left handers in their starting rotation. Ground ball to short right at Andrews. Rayburn is out two away. Tiger's been looking for one of those for about three years now. <laughs> got that right. They have CJ Wilson and they also have Derek Holland. Derek Holland is tremendous. Have you seen some of what he's been able to do that youngster they have and in their rotation and left hander. Yep. Very impressive. Three of his last five games have been complete game shutouts. Activity in their bullpen. There's Tadayama warming up. And Tadayama, he must go every day. He also pitched uh, before they got here uh, when they were in uh, Toronto, I believe. Another thing about that Texas rotation, they have four of their five guys that are 30 years or younger. In their starting five. Colby Lewis turned 32 yesterday. Here's the 1 0. They're starting to teach him uh, in the minor leagues now. Mike Maddox told me yesterday when they get to double A and triple A, you're not looking over your shoulder. You're going to go as hard as you can, as long as you can. And that's the mindset that some of the young kids. That have come up have with the Texas Rangers these days. Mike went on to say that it's really unfair to have a pitcher in the minor leagues that you never let pitch out of any jams late in games, and you call them the big leagues, and you try to ask him to pitch out of a jam in the big leagues. Makes sense. High drive, deep right, way back, and the Tigers have the lead. And the Beatles heat up. His second home run in as many nights. What was it before last night? His first home run since what, June 25th? 25th, correct. Right? Now he's got two in as many nights. 
That's a 4-3 lead. He leaned on that. He's got some really nice hands. Quick hands. Very little body. But that side swing really gives you an idea of how rapid his hands get through the hitting zone. How about that month of July when he hit 197 with one RBI the entire month? He only had one stake. That's it. In July. That's all he enjoyed. Went off to a nice start here in the month of August. In his all-star season. Avila now has hit 12 home runs. And a wave and a miss. Down goes Benami to end the inning, not before the Tigers take the lead on that one swing by Alex. 390 feet worth. Series against the Texas Rangers with a 105 matinee. Tickets are available now at 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Well, the Tigers have the lead once again, courtesy of the home run by Alex Avila. His second of the series. It's now a 4-3 game. And the first pitch from Fister is outside to David Murphy. By the way, that home run by Avila was also his third against a lefty this year. Let's foul back. One ball and one strike. Alex now with 52 RBIs this season. Rolled foul. One and two. There's some action in the Detroit bullpen. Albuquerque and Coke into center field, right at Jackson. Just about in his tracks. One away here in the seventh. And Fisker now has retired six straight. Your Vitori Alba. And not been able to get this guy out. He's had three hits in the series. Had a double RBI last night. Double run scored tonight. And Fisker misses outside. 1 0. Check swing foul. Talking to uh, Jeff Jones, uh, pitching coach, before the game today, and also Alex Avila, just trying to get a really good scouting report on uh, Fister. They both said that there's some deception uh, in his windup, and because he is six feet eight inches, there's a base hit to left. 
it creates the downward angle that most pitchers try to get to. I mean, he literally throws downhill. And that's why you don't see that many good swings against Fister, although the fastball very rarely gets above 92 miles an hour. This is a very quick windup, too. From the stretch, obviously, a little bit different. Tying run is on now for Texas. They go to the top of their lineup. Ian Kinsler, who certainly has power, 16 homers. And it's also a look that most of these Texas Rangers you don't get very often because there's not a whole lot of pitchers walking around that are six feet eight inches. I mean literally throwing downhill. Bon attempt throw back to first. Got him leaning off the bag. That's a good heads up play by Avila. We don't see Alex throw behind the runner very often. No. Toriaba came off the base. Did he get him while he was off? No. No, he didn't. High fly ball left field. Bosch calling for it. And there are two gone now. You're talking about the uh, height of Fisker at 6'8. How about some of the tallest Tigers in history? Tony Clark, 6'7. Eric Eckenstaller, part of that 03 season. He's 6'7. Fisker, the tallest. Even taller than our good buddy Slim Love. Andrew Miller. Do you have any idea who Slim Love is? I I don't, but he got a big league name. Yes, That's a nice name. That's a smooth name. How you doing? I'm Slim Love. Now batting, Slim Love. Oh, and one on Andrews. Ball outside, one ball, one strike. Fister just missed on that one. Two balls in one strike. Fister doesn't throw a slider, but that cutter, the break on it is so big that it acts like a slider. And he's got about two feet, three feet break with that pitch. Chop to better meet. And out at first base is Andrews. What a nice night in his debut by Fister. Stretch time.
And by Pepsi Max. Go to the 2012 SpringBaseball.com for a chance to win a trip for you and nine friends. Back here in the Motor City on a nice night here in downtown Detroit. Tigers on top of this one, four to three, as we head to the bottom of the seventh inning. And we have a new pitcher now for Texas. And the wall side windows pitching change. Mark Lowe will take over. Lowe's got a pretty good fastball. Uh, he gets up to about 95 miles an hour. He's won two games. He's lost two. Has nine holds for the Texas Rangers. And the earned run average just a shade under four for Mark. He'll have to deal with the top of the lineup. It'll be Jackson, Bosch, and Ordonez. AJ tonight with a bunch single, a walk, and he's also reached on an air. Lowe is 28 years old out of Houston, Texas. And a ball low, 1 0 on Jackson. Lowe spent some time with the Seattle Mariners, 06 until the middle of last year, so. He knows all about the Tigers' newest pitchers, Paulie and Fister. The 1 0. Seattle must have an over an abundance of pitching because their pitching is still good, but yet they've got guys scattered all around the league that have good arms. He's got a pretty good 1 2 right now, and Felix Hernandez and Michael Pineda. That they do. You know, we talk about possible rookie of the year candidates. We sometimes forget about the pitchers. Pineda's going to be in that mix. He should be. Hellickson, maybe, with uh, Tampa? Yes. Yeah, but that boy, Trumbo, he hit a ball about 500 feet last night. Yeah, I know it. And we just got uh, an eyeful of him over the four day period here at Comerica. Missed it, and the count goes to three and one on Austin Jackson. I really don't know why it is, but guys on the West Coast don't get uh, the notoriety that they deserve on in certain situations because you don't hear a lot of talk about Trumbo. You just don't. Not based on the numbers he's put up, not at all. Soft liner to third. And out at first base is Jackson. The leadoff man kept off the bases. That'll bring up Brennan Bosch. Bosch on base just once tonight. He walked in the third inning. A couple of fly balls otherwise. And batting a solid 297. And Bosch came into this one tonight hitting 433 in seven games against Texas this year. Had a great night last night. A couple of singles, stolen base, scored a couple of runs. Game winning homer. And caught by the shortstop Andrews, who goes to the grass in short left. He's got some athleticism. Really good athlete. Two up, two down. Only 22 years old, Elvis Andrews. Bright future. Here's Ordonez. 96 from low. A couple of years ago, Omar Vizquel. The future Hall of Famer now playing for the Chicago White Sox spent one year with the Texas Rangers to tutor Elvis Andrews. That was in his rookie year. They went that for a teacher. Yeah, they weren't sure uh, whether he was going to be able to make the jump from double A to the big leagues. And as an insurance policy, they signed this tail. And you were talking about it earlier. Andrews finished second in the rookie of the year that award that year and he gives Vizquel a lot of credit for teaching him really how to play shortstop in the big leagues. Vizquel's a Hall of Famer isn't he? Yes. 
Two balls, one strike on Ordonez. I mean, Andrews already had talent, but he just taught him how to practice. How to practice with a purpose. Not to all those flashy plays while you're practicing. Three and one. Low takes over for Harrison, the starter who went six and gave up that home run to Avila, which broke the tides. Four three Tigers. With Cabrera waiting on deck. And the three one on the outer edge. Three and two on Maglio. Singled in his last at bat, double play balls in his first two at bats. Three two pitch. It is outside. Boy, half the Rangers infield was walking back to the dugout. Maglio gets a walk. It was close. So Maglio gets the walk, but he's done for the night. Don Kelly will pinch run at first base. And then stay in to play right field. Here's Cabrera. Ground ball to short. Andrews is there, and they'll get the force ending the inning. Nothing doing for the Tigers. Seven in the books, and you're watching Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire. Here's our Comerica game summary. The Rangers seven, eight, nine hitters have done some good work in this series. Eight hits, as a matter of fact. Speaking of good work, Doug Fister in his Tiger debut, seven innings, three runs, and 13 ground ball outs in this game. And Alex Avila having a big series. And as a result, Tigers have a four to three lead. They go to the bullpen now, and Phil Coke comes in. Phil Coke now pitching in his 27th game. He started the season in the Tigers rotation and. They moved him back to the bullpen where he has had a lot of success the last couple of years. One is a Yankee, 
and one as a Tiger. And you see Don Kelly asking Tom Brookins, are we playing no doubles depth? Here is Josh Hamilton to lead it off, and he lines one out of the reach of the shortstop Peralta into left field. So Hamilton has his second hit of the night. Tying run is on. That's going to be it. Skipper coming out, and Cope will end up facing one batter. So Leland goes to the bullpen here. Joaquin Benoit will be coming in. And Leland will march to the mound, take the baseball. We step aside. Pitching change here at Comerica. an app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or BlackBerry. Get live audio pitch-by-pitch -pitch tracking, video highlights, and more. Text at BAT to 31826 or visit Tigers.com. Well, the Rangers have the tying run on here. We're in the eighth inning, and Joaquin Benoit will take over now for Detroit. And he will be facing Michael Young. Rough night last night for Benoit. He gave up a home run to Cruz and he gave up a two run shot to Napoli. Yeah, but Brennan Bosch hit a home run late in the game and Benoit came away with the win. Waving a miss. Young is one for three tonight infield single. And when you've had a rough night, as Benoit did last night, you can't wait to get back out there again to get that taste out of your mouth. Here's the 0 1. Avila down to block it. One ball, one strike on Young. Hamilton, a leadoff single here. The Tigers took the lead on the home run by Avila in the sixth. They're your top two finishers last year in the MVP. Hamilton first, Cabrera second. And in case you're wondering, Michael Young has grounded into 13 double plays this year. Take another one right here. You betcha. The 1 1. Make it 1 and 2 on Young. Young has played all over the place this year. He is DH. He's played first, second, third. Michael Young, one of those guys that. Uh, 
was a position player an everyday player before this year and having absolutely no problem making the transition from a position player to an everyday DH although he has had to play some positions but when DHing no problem for him outside two balls two strikes Victor Martinez also made that transition very smoothly to an everyday DH it's not the easiest thing to do for some players. 60 games at DH this year. Filling in right now at third base for Adrian Beltre, who is on the disabled list. Foul again. Each team with nine hits tonight. Tigers have four runs, nine hits. Rangers, three runs, nine hits. Both teams have an air. Tigers have a long road trip coming up, but this homestand has been no picnic with the two best teams of the West coming in. The Angels for four, they split that series, and the Rangers for three. Up to the bullpen tonight. And the 2 2 inside, three balls, two strikes. Back up the middle. There's one. Peralta's relay. There's two. Nicely done. 6 3 double play. Two gone. Tough night for Young tonight. Looked like Johnny was wanted to shuffle that ball to Rayburn initially, and then he thought better of it, and he finished the play himself, touching the bag with the right foot and throwing off balance, but he had plenty enough time to get the out. Here's Nelson Cruz now with two outs. And it was last night in this spot, the eighth inning, in which Cruz took Benoit deep with a solo home run. That started their comeback in the eighth. Change piece at 85 miles an hour by Joaquin. Rolled to third. Benami way behind the bag was playing perfectly. And Benoit does the job. Gets a double play ball and a ground out.
League East rivalry between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Coverage begins at 4 p.m. Saturday on your local Fox station. Tigers got the boot uh, this Saturday. They had been on Fox Saturday Baseball the last three Saaturdays. Well, we've got a pitching change now as so we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Here's one of the newest Texas Rangers, Kochi Uehara. Well, this much uh, we do know about Uehara. Uh, he's going to fill up the strike zone with a lot of fastballs. The velocity is going to be about 88 to 89 miles an hour, and we're going to see some swings and misses. It'll be Martinez Peralta Rayburn here in the eighth inning facing Uehara. We've seen Uehara a couple of times when he was wearing the Baltimore Orioles uniform and in amazement uh, we would watch him throw those fastballs up there and we'd see some Tigers swing a little tardy on his fastballs even though the velocity not very high. There you have it. 89 Victor looking for that piece of cheese. And a little late on it. A couple of pretty good players went the other way in that deal. Chris Davis and Tommy Hunter. Uehara is 36 years old. Trying to keep this a one run game before we get to the ninth. The 0 2 swing and a miss. First strike out of the night for Uehara. One out. Bring up Johnny Peralta. Johnny a double and three at bats. Up foul. Oh and one. Jose Valverde getting ready to come in. Moreland Napoli and Murphy will be the three scheduled hitters when we get to the ninth. Oh and two on Peralta. White Sox really taking it on the chin tonight, 13 to 1 to the Yanks. And Uehara just missed one and two. Rolled foul. Series finale happens here tomorrow, and it's a day game, which means. Brad Penny has to be pitching. And he is. It'll be Penny and Alexi Ogando. It's amazing how many day games Brad Penny has drawn this year. Can't remember the last time he pitched a night game. I'm trying to remember that myself. Big Brad will get another one tomorrow, another day game. Three and two now on Peralta. Rayburn on deck. Here's the 3 2. Ground ball to third. Michael Young. Tomorrow's start for Brad Penny will be his 15th. 15th day start. I mean, they've changed the rotation a couple times, too. He just continues to draw the day game. 15 out of 22. Tomorrow. It's uncanny. Big fella said, I'm just not a morning person, Rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a little grumpy. I'm a little grumpy when I get up. Ball high to Ryan Rayburn. <laughs> 
There's a strike called 89 outside corner one and one. Verdi hoping to dance tonight. Swing and a miss. One and two. That'll get back out of play. That's about the best fastball that Uihara features. 90 on the radar gun. Uehara with the trade bringing him here to Texas reunites with Tadayama, who is also in the Texas pen, was his high school teammate in Japan. Yeah, I read that. Two balls, two strikes. And the 2 2. Swing and a drive into left field. Hit well. That ball is up and that ball is gone. Rayburn with a two out solo shot. Huge. I mean, huge insurance run. Valverde's job just got a little bit easier. I think that was a changeup uh, from Uihara, and that's why right-handers don't like to throw changeups to right-handed batters. A lot of times, good things happen for the hitter and not the pitcher. Tenth home run of the year for Ryan Rayburn. Thirty-third RBI, five to three, Detroit. So Rayburn gets a start here tonight. Jim Leland pushes a right button, a homer, two singles, two. Not to mention the home run comes in a key spot. Big swing there by Alex. 0 and 2. Rayburn gets his first three hit game of this season. It's good to see uh, Rayburn do some positive things at home too. He had struggled here at Comerica Park. And good to see him come back out and regroup. Second half of the year. Last time Rayburn had a three hit game. It was in Texas last September the 15th. And that's why his numbers career against the Rangers are pretty lofty 393. The one two swing and a miss and Avila goes down ending the inning not before the Tigers get a Rayburn homer which means Papa Grande will protect a two run lead.
will take over at second base now for Detroit. And Ryan Rayburn will move from second to left field. Brennan Bosch is out of the game. Jose Valverde, Papa Grande is on to try and close this one. He got his 29th save last night, protecting a one run lead for his club, and he's got a two run spread tonight to protect. And he will face Moreland, Napoli, and Murphy. Those are the hitters that are due up. Five runs, ten hits, Detroit. Three runs, nine hits for the Rangers. Moreland, who leads it off, is 0 for 3 tonight. Tigers got one in the sixth on the Avila home run, one in the eighth on the Rayburn home run. That broke the 3 3 tie. First pitch outside from Valverde. Verdi last night came on, got a couple of quick outs, then an air, an infield single before he got the final out. Swing and a miss. 1 1 on Mitch Morgan. Two and one. Three and one on Moreland. Walk him Napoli on deck has power as we saw last night in the eighth inning his two run homer tied the game up last night. Here's the three one. Fouled away three two. Ball to second base. Santiago has that one. One out. So that'll bring up Mike Napoli where he can't hurt you. Still a two run lead. Bases are empty. And Napoli tonight. Double play ball reaching on an air and bouncing out. Four for Valverde. And the 0 1. One ball and one strike.
Earlier this year, Valverde recorded the 200th save of his career. That was in May at Toronto. And he's been perfect in that regard in save situations this year. What a nice luxury to have. Now you've got that lockdown closer in your bullpen. A guy that you can bring into the game and you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. More often than not, you're going to shake hands at the end of the game. You see 2 1. There's Outside, three and one. There is nothing more demoralizing than to have uh, that guy at the back end of a game that you're just not really that comfortable with, or a closer that doesn't get the job done with regularity. Valverde doesn't have that issue. Murphy waiting on deck. And the 3 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Napoli was not trying to hit a single. And with that 95 mile per hour fastball by Valverde thrown right by Napoli. Might as well come back with the same pitch. 33,596 in attendance here tonight. 30 plus here every night. Here's the 3 2. High towering fly ball left field. Rayburn going back to the track to the wall and he leaps, can't get it, it's gone. He came back with that same fastball at 94 in Napoli with that massive power. Flipped it out of here. 17th home run of the year for Napoli. His second in as many nights. And now it's a one run game. Fastball right down the middle. And Napoli did with it. What he was trying to do, really. Each team now with 10 hits. So Papa Grande has some work to do now as Murphy steps in. One run game. And he waves and misses. 17th homer for Napoli is 42nd RBI. Napoli playing some of the best baseball that he's played in his career in a Rangers uniform. That's high, one ball, one strike. Well, he came off a month of July in which he hit 443. He's always had huge power, but a lot of times some of those balls that he would hit when he was playing for the Angels. Uh, they didn't get out of the yard at night in California at Angels Stadium and Dodger Stadium. Uh, the ball didn't carry all that well. Bouncing ball, second base. Santiago with another chance. Two gone. One more out to get. Here comes the crowd. Tony Alba single double and he is their last chance in a one run game here in the ninth. <laughs> Fouled back out of play. Oh and one on Tori Alba. Congratulations. He dropped the glasses. Too busy getting high five. <laughs> oh and one. Inside. One ball, one strike on Tori Alba.
Valverde trying to make it 30 out of 30 save opportunities. Strike called, one and two. And the one, two. Swing and a miss. Let's dance. Valverde puts the capper on this one, and the Tigers hold out for the win. Thirty out of thirty saves for Jose Valverde, his third career season with at least thirty. Ryan Rayburn's home run proved to be huge. Huge pitch here. And to Tori Alba, Tori Alba had taken some really good swings in the first two games of this series, but that devastating splitter. And he got the punch out there of Tori Alba. 5-4 Tigers win. They've won the first two games in this series. Everybody goes home happy tonight. Back with more.